I don't much have, I don't know how much you were able to see when I was drawing this doll, um, but basically because my iPad the battery ran out and I didn't realize it ran out. So basically, I have this book. Figure it out, and I'm using this book to learn how to draw people. I use this to kind of help me form the face, and after a lot of erasing and struggle, um, I came out with this face. It's not exactly, so you know, you're going to develop your own style. It's n You're not going to be able to, or at least I don't think you'll ever be able to create the same doll that the book has, that this um, artist did, but you want to create something similar and something that you like, and this is my doll. I like how it came out. I was watching a video in where they used a lot of the acrylics to uh, go over and um, create a lot of different tones and stuff. So I got my acrylics out and I want to go ahead and see if I can do something similar to what I watched on the video. So I put uh, my first coat of skin tone and then I went over it with my dark tone. And then went over again with another, um, with the skin tone again, just to blend everything out. And I really like how this doll came out. It, everything was blending pretty nicely. So I'm still blending my highlights and lowlights. And now I'm putting some color on her cheek. Adding some white on there to help it blend a little more. And then I started on her eyes, so I just put a little bit of blue and then white on top just to give it a little more translucent um, look to her eyes. And just went over with some black acrylic paint to give her eyes some more emphasis in her eyebrow. So far I'm liking how this doll is coming out and then now I'm just putting one coat of like a reddish brown on her hair and then I'm going to go over that with a little more darker colors just to give it a little bit of, of um, highlights and lowlights, more dimension on her hair. It looks more realistic going over with different colors than just using a flat um, red color or brown color and I'm just putting some more color in the background now for this next treatment that I'm gonna do you gotta make sure that your paintings it's dry so what I want to go over it with is some color pencils I do have some sketch color pencils and graphite pencils um, that I use for drawing and that's what I'm using here I want to go over her features to kind of give it a little more um, definition, but I do not want to use black. Okay, so while this my um, page is drying, so this is the finished page. I went over it with a little bit of my charcoal pens, um, pencils, and it's somewhere in this mess. Oh, here they are. Usually when I craft, my whole room gets messy. So I have these these um, pencils in here. So I used that to, I just want to lightly go over her features. I did not want to go put too much black. Because I've noticed when I do put black on some of my dolls, it just takes too much. Um, it's just a little too strong, I think. It's not, it doesn't look as delicate like this one. I I think, in my opinion, then if I just um, just put a light little charcoal and kind of um, work on her features. So I love the nose. It came out really good. I like the eyes. I like her profile. So I think this doll came out pretty nice. So now I want to spruce it up, but it's still kind of tacky. So I'm going to let it dry. And while it's drying, I want to create some um, flowers. So I'm going to put some flowers around her. And also, I'm going to use this stencil by the Crafter's Companion. So it's a it's a script stencil. And you can use any kind of stencil you have. And then I'm going to use this flower. This flower is called Blossom Beauty. So the stamp is called Blossom Beauty. I really love this stamp. It has this doll. And I have a video where I show you how I use this stamp. 
there's a doll here I can't take it out but see there's a doll there I hope you can see that oh let me just kind of move, take it out so you can see the white so there's a doll and then you use that to um, create your face so this is the beginning of your face and then you create um, hair and and the, and the dress and everything so it's a nice little doll to um, start with I like this and then it comes with a stamp a flower stamp and it comes also with a mask and what you can do is once you paint your doll you can use this on top and and do more mixed media effects on your on your page you can mask the doll so I went ahead and stamped a bunch of these flowers um, and I have some jelly papers that I was playing with and I do have a video in where I show you how to use that um, to create these jelly papers so um, I did buy the cornetting dies so the dies are separate and it creates these different three flowers and when I first saw this stamp in Amazon they had this stamp and then you know how sometimes Amazon suggests um, another product along with what you are buying so he suggested this die and I was thinking why do I have three dies for I only have two stamps it didn't dawn on me um, that the flower could be cut three different ways so here's the top of the flower this is the middle and then this is the whole flower itself so I'm going to show you how to use it because it took me a little bit to kind of figure there figure it out um, so I went ahead and stamped my jelly paper so let's go ahead and cut out the big die so you're going to line your die and if you do not have a magnetic platform I highly recommend that you get one or you can use tape but I do like the platform because I really get um, to position my die exactly where I want it and then another tip I would like to give you is always have a um, one of your plates you should keep it nice and straight so this one's nice and straight so you have even cut and then one of your plates should be your cutting plate so put your cutting die the cutting surface of your die onto the cutting plate like I have there and I'm telling you this platform I love this platform for my thin dies it works fantastic so there you have one piece now you take I'm gonna take the next die and I'm gonna use it for these and then this one goes right here okay hope you can see that okay and then I'm gonna go ahead and position my cutting die and this paper is a little thicker it's not laying as flat as I like it to be so that way the die will just um, stay on it but it you don't still don't need tape you just make sure your die is on on the paper and there you have the next one and then the last one I'm gonna take this piece and I'm gonna use the smaller die so now I'm to my third die and I'm gonna place that right there perfect and see sometimes it's, the magnet is not catching so you just move the paper until the magnet catch your die and then let's run it through And there you have and see so that's how you cut your pieces you can get three different dies for um, three different die cuts out of that one flower I love this flower and see how pretty this will look if you put this here put this one there like so and then put maybe a, the smaller one if you cut this one out and you put it on there that look that's gonna look nice so I'm going to go ahead and 
keep cutting some more of my flowers. Oh, and the other thing I'm going to use is this butterfly. It's also from St St um, Stependus. And this is called the Jumbo Hydrania. And it was on sale a long time ago. But if you see this one, um, you might be able to see it in Joanne's. I bought this some years ago. And I used that to um, stamp some, some butterflies. And I'm going to use that in my page. So I'm going to go ahead and get everything cut out. And I shall be back. By that time, I hopefully my page is dry and we can do a little more mixed media on that page. So I'm kind of ready to finish my um, page. One of the things I want to show you is how to fussy cut a stamp. And you may know it already, but I just want to make sure that I review it in case others may not know this. But when you are cutting out a stamp or cutting out any anything, you want to move the paper, not your scissors. So you don't want to be doing this okay you don't want to move just the scissors like that you want to move the paper you're going to leave the scissors um the scissors just going to go up and down like you see here and leave enough space that you can hold your paper and you're going to move the paper not the scissors scissors are staying in the same position they're just opening and close what i'm moving is the paper when you do that, you get a better cut than if I did this. If I just kept the paper still and then I try to move my scissors, see how it doesn't really cut as well. So you want to move your scissors. You see how it's not the greatest there? And look at compared to that. And look at that. Not the greatest. So if you keep the scissors still and you just move the paper, you get a better cut, a cleaner cut. And it looked more like if you had a die to cut this out. You can leave a white edge if you want. Especially these antennas. These antennas sometimes are hard to cut. So I'm going to show you. You're just going to go in, move the paper. Not the scissors. Turn it around, moving the paper. Cut out, moving the paper. Go around your antenna, moving the paper. Not the scissors. My scissors are staying still. Move the paper down, turn the paper, move it around. See how perfect it cuts? Um, you just want to move the paper, not the scissors. Okay, and then turn it around. So I hope you can you seeing this. You move the paper. And see, you have a nice little cutout when you do that. Okay, so I have everything cut out, all my pieces. And what I think the first thing I want to do, and everything is dry, so everything is nice and dry. I went ahead and traced out uh, her image because I want to use some masking, some modeling paste, and I want to mask her because I don't really want to mess up this, um, this painting or this. Um, doll mixed media. It took me a while to make it and I don't really want to mess it up. Okay, so now I'm going to just take some paste. The nice thing about masking out my doll and then applying the um, paste is that I don't get any of that paste on her. And then just make sure you wipe your stencil immediately so that way it doesn't um, dry on there. And then using the mask again, I am going to add some color mist on my doll and then drying it. And notice that none of that color mist really uh, um, went on her face. And I really like how her face came out. So I wanted to try to do as much as I can so that my face doesn't get smear or um, get color, you know, color mist on it. So I'm applying my butterflies with some gel medium and I'm putting a lot of flowers. I wanted to put a lot of flowers on that side of her hair. For the next step, I want to make sure all my um, flowers and butterflies are dry because it, as you can see, they're all kind of commingling together, but you don't know where one starts and the other one ends. So I wanted to put a little black outline on all my different pieces so that way you can really see one flower 
um, the layers between all these flowers on here. And then I just wanted to put some beads and some some pearls and I'm putting some um, Okay, so I'm done with the page, and sometimes it's, I'm having so much fun that it's hard to know when to finish. So I think I'm done. I like the flowers. I really like how my doll came out. I'm getting a little better with drawing. I especially like the nose. I always have an issue with the nose, but that nose came out pretty. It's not too large. It's not deformed or anything. The face looks like it's proportion. Even she has a slight tilt to her left and um the chin i really like how her face came a little like a, a, a it looks more like a heart shape with a little tiny chin i do like that um i like the acrylic the good thing about acrylic is you can keep layer on top of it so i like that and i also like the background it came out pretty pretty nice Overall, everything I do like. Um, the only thing maybe that I could a bit I could do without is the black outline. I think after I started, um, I didn't really care for it too much. But once you commit to something, you have to stick with it because it. You know, I already put the outline here. I need to continue on with the other outline. But I do like it. I think the next thing I want to do is maybe do an outline because th there's a, some black outline but I really didn't do let's see um, let's outline the outside of this okay And I'm just going to dip my finger in water and then go around the edges. If you're wondering what pen what pencil I'm using, it's a it's a kind of crayon pencil. It's called Pacific Art. It's a graphite stick and it's a 12B. I found it in the clearance section of Hobby Lobby and I really like it. I really like it because it really is it, it it dissolves with water pretty nicely as you can see here really nice so now I can say that I'm done I just needed that because it looked like it was a little unbalanced for, for me because there was some outline here but yet my outside wasn't grungy now it's nice and grungy so I hope you like this video and if you have not seen this book and you're trying to learn how to draw, this is another book that I recommend for you to get. He's pretty good on showing you how to create the faces and the por proportions and it wasn't that expensive. Um, it was on Amazon and I think I got it for 10 bucks, um, this book. So that was pretty much it. So I hope you like this and thank you for watching. Bye now.